<laughs> All right, uh, I think we I think we're live. Uh, mass panic and uh, etc. Um, it's uh, welcome to our uh, first masterclass of uh, 2021 uh, with Emma. Emma is, uh, is, has done a couple of things with us before. Uh, a, a, a fantastic resource for um, the business end of uh, of photographers. Um, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, Hunter's Light was was started to educate, motivate, and inspire, um, but not just. How do I use my flash, or um, you know, uh, how do I edit this this uh, image? Uh, you know, I, I always saw it as being more a case of well, so yes, you're a photographer, and and if you just want to learn how to use your flash, fantastic. If you want to learn how to improve your business, well, we've got that for you as well. And um, you know, hopefully, uh, the the content that we bring into you will uh, will help you make a make yourself into a more rounded photographer, more rounded, well-rounded uh, photography business. Uh, and and you can just do better in um, in your chosen profession. So um, yeah, uh, Emma's going to be uh, taking us through some uh, some lockdown assistance and and tips and tricks, etc. Um, I know I'm I'm uh, pretty keen because uh, I haven't listened to any of her advice um, on on what I was supposed to do during lockdown. So I'm just going to take notes and uh, you know <laughs> try and implement them uh, you know retrospectively. So uh, yeah, Emma, I think um, over to you. Thanks very much again for for the time. Um, for uh, coming through. I know that um, we spoke uh, earlier on about uh, you know, this becoming um, a more regular situation um, and I think that could be really cool. You know, so um, I think what, what's important to, uh, for people to take out of, of this masterclass um, session, it, it is a free session. Um, what we're going to look at doing in future is, is providing uh, really, really amazing content that is valuable content um, and um, we're looking at, uh, at charging for those particular um, uh, masterclasses. But as you'll see in this um, example, uh, you know, the, the content is, is well worth it. So, um, yeah, Emma, over to you. Take it away. Let's see what you got. Thanks, Thanks very much. Uh, thanks for having me, Quinton. It's great to be here. Um, just a little one before we start, I can't see any chats here, so I was going to say to everybody, if you've got questions, I've allowed a bit of time at the end for Q&A, so I think maybe if you've got a question as I go through the presentation, um, we can save them for the end, and I don't know if you're able to share them with me somewhere Yeah, here. What, what I'm going to do is um, I've, um, I've opened up the comments, can you hear me? Oh, I can see. Yes, I can see that I've opened the comments tab now. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So the the um, uh, what I'm going to also do is because uh, we're using a new system this time around, and um, uh, I think that um, you know we're all going to kind of see how this works, and uh, you know, I'm going to make mistakes as usual, but we'll we'll get through it, and it'll be awesome. Um, but I can see the um, the comments okay. here. Um, so as they come up, we'll um, we'll go through them, um, and uh, yeah, we'll just take it from there. I think. Um, Perfect. Let's go. For awesome. It now. Right, Fab, if you could bring up my presentation, I that would be fantastic. do that. There we go. Okay, so um, hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, uh, this presentation is going to be essentially a lockdown survival guide for, for photographers. And um, what I'm sharing um, in this presentation are the things that I did during our really hard lockdown last year that really helped me to keep um, my business going. Um, obviously, we're on a little bit of limited time here, so what you're going to get is a, is a bit of an overview. Obviously, there's, there's a lot more uh, to be doing, um, but I'm going to give you some tips to at least get you started off and things you can be doing right now. So before we jump into the, the content, just a little bit about who, who I am and why I'm here. So obviously, I'm Emma O'Brien. I've been um, a professional portrait photographer for almost 17 years now, which makes me feel very old. Um, and I started my career shooting weddings in the UK. And then when I moved to South Africa in 2009, I switched over to shooting portraits. Um, retired from wedding photography because it wasn't really my thing. Um, and then quite accidentally ended up getting into the dog photography. Um, and then now I'm also doing business coaching for photographers alongside my, um, my photography business. So Emma, um, before, you, before you carry on, what, what was the accident that got you into dog photography? I need to know what the accident <laughs> was. <laughs> so 
actually, I um, I went to the Santon SPCA and adopted a little sausage dog called Jeremy. <laughs> and uh, when I was there, I I said to them, you know, I'm a photographer. Can I can I help you with you know some fundraising or something? And we came up with the idea of shooting an annual calendar. And the first one came out in 2012. Um, and I obviously started shooting animals, realized I had a bit of a knack for it, and then obviously started getting commissions from people for it. So it was never intentional. It just, uh, <laughs> just kind of happened. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so, so that's, that's how the, the, the dogs happened. Um, and then the, the, the moving into, into coaching it's a partly a bit of a, a business reshuffle um, because I would prefer to be working fewer weekends these days. Um, I think we can all relate. Unfortunately, photography is generally one of those um, weekend things. Um, and I'm just kind of looking at restructuring life a little bit so I'm not out of the house all of the time. Um, and also my own journey with working with a business coach has been totally transformational for my business and it's something I'm very passionate about sharing with people. So that is why I'm here. Um, so today's presentation, um, we are, I've got a few things I'm going to be covering. I'm going to be talking about setting goals for your photography business, um, how to do that and why that's important. I'm going to be covering um, some lockdown marketing strategies. Um, I'm going to be talking about how, how to keep creating work and why to keep you should be creating work, even if you're not actually working directly with clients. And I'm going to be sharing three ways to make money during lockdown um, if you can't shoot. Now, I think this is going to be especially useful for wedding photographers who I think everyone's had weddings postponed um and i um, i keep seeing stuff in groups i actually think home affairs have stopped registering weddings i'm um, somebody might actually be able yeah, to they, jump in they and, have yeah they uh, won't issue uh, licenses anymore so um the basically the weddings uh, seem to be off uh, for now yeah so it's so it's off so if you're if that's what you do you know you are a little bit stuck but there are things you can be doing to to keep generating income which i think is really really important and then we've got a bit of time for q a at the end so um, um, I'm sure there'll be some questions that come up, which I'm very happy to, to answer. So if you can just make a note of those whilst I'm going through the, the presentation, and then we'll, we'll have a bit of time for that at the end. Um, so I think the first thing to, to, to talk about here um, is, is the importance of setting goals for your business. And I know when <laughs> we had 2020, what a marvelous year, um, we had 2020. Um, and then 2021, I think, has not started as brilliantly as everybody hoped it might have done. <laughs> not at um, all. <laughs> no, but it's still really, really important that you are setting goals for your, your business, because when you've got a bit of direction, um, you're more likely to take some action and you're more likely to see results. I'm going to preface this with, I know there's a lot of, um, a lot of talk of, photographers who haven't got work and people who are struggling and which is a is an absolute reality I'm, I'm, I'm not denying that in any shape or form but everybody didn't run out of money and everybody didn't stop wanting to have photo shoots done um you know i've got uh, my, my client base tends to be sort of doctors and, and lawyers um nothing changed for them they've all still been working. So I'm still having clients spending quite a lot of money on photo shoots for their dogs. So, you know, and, and, and I'm not, you know, a mass exception to that. So I think it's important for, for everybody listening to understand that, um, you know, the money hasn't all dried up. There are still clients out there. Um, and it's really important that we keep fo kind of focusing on, on the, the positive side of our businesses, if that makes sense to everybody. Um, so a few things with, with setting goals. So, so having goals gives us direction and it gives us some business clarity. Um, and it kind of, it, it's goals are like your business GPS. If you don't know where you're going, you're not going to go anywhere. And I think that's sort of why people um, often stagnate in their, in their businesses because, you know, you've, you've been kind of plodding along, shooting, everything's changed now. And I think there's lots of people feeling a bit lost. So um, really important to set some, some goals. And there's a few things to bear in mind with when you're, when you're creating goals for your business, that they need to be specific, 
So I'll often have um, coaching clients that I'm working with and I've got my own little photography group and people in there that'll say, I want to make more money or I want to book more clients. Um, that's fantastic. But when you're setting a goal, we need to know how many more clients and how much money. Um, so we've got a specific amount that we're working towards, which ties in with the second point of goals being measurable, because if we don't know how much money or how many clients, we've no idea if we've hit those goals. So, um, you know, it becomes very difficult to work towards something totally intangible. Um, your goals should be kind of pretty realistically attainable. Um, I think it's good to have goals that stretch you out of your comfort zone because, you know, goals really should do that. Um, but at the same time, you know, let's say for, for, for instance, you're, you're earning 25,000 rand a month in your photography business, to then set a goal to jump it to 100,000 rand a month is going to be pretty, pretty difficult to do. Um, if you're working at a business model of 25 grand a month, you're going to have to change quite a few things to, to, to hit 100k. But if you were to switch that goal up to 35,000 or 40, for instance, um, maybe you're going to up your rates, maybe you're going to add a few more clients in, um, and it's very doable. So we've got to just sort of bear in mind that goals are, you know, they're not totally ridiculous. Otherwise, you just set yourself up to fail. And then we end up kind of not taking any action or, or, or doing anything. Um, your goals also need to be relevant to other things that are happening in your, in your life and kind of the rest of your life. Um, I think we could do a whole presentation on work-life balance uh, for <laughs> self-employed. <laughs> Please, who, who knows how to do that? If they think they've got it, they're lying. <laughs> I think we might need a, a psychologist or a psychiatrist. <laughs> um, <laughs> your goals, do they need to need to sit with the rest of rest of what's happening in your life. So if you've kind of decided that this is the year you're going to pick your kids up from school every day to set yourself a goal of doubling your amount of clients is probably not going to be in alignment with that because you're going to you want to be using unless you totally change your business model. Um, I would say if you're going to do that, you want to be doubling your rates, not your clients. Um, you're, you're not going to hit either of those goals and you're just going to kind of butt up against an unhappy spouse, unhappy children and everything else. And when, when you've got goals that don't fit with kind of the different areas of your life, generally you, you don't reach them. And then it sort of puts you off from, uh, from, from trying to, to set goals and, and take action again. Um, so, so yeah, so that in a nutshell, that kind of just gives you a bit of an overview of overview of goals. Um, and you don't want to set too many. So I think it's great to set a few yearly goals. So maybe you'll have kind of three yearly goals for the different areas of your of your life. I tend to set goals for like a, I have three months goals. I'll have a, a financial goal for every month. Um, which kind of sits into my bigger financial goal for the whole year. So you can sort of break them down into more and more manageable chunks, um, which which makes them a bit uh, a bit better. I think I, I I have shared in the Hunters of Light where a specific goal setting article that I wrote and shared and did a video. So um, there's a bit more information. It goes a bit deeper with that in there. Um, so yeah, so that kind of that, that, that's so. Uh, this is a really great place to to be to be starting with your business at the beginning of the year, and also at a time where it's a little bit quieter, and you've actually got a little bit of room to reflect and see what it is you want to do with your with your business. Um, and the second piece of, of of this is our is our lockdown marketing, um, and. I think marketing is something that that a lot of photographers struggle with. It's something I'm often asked about. Um, and I think you know marketing is something that requires a bit of a strategy and it is a it's a long game. Um, really often I see photographers on social media who are literally posting an image on Instagram with the hey, book a shoot or posting an image on Instagram with you know hashtag interior photography. Um, and it's whilst that might get you the odd client through the door, it's not a good marketing strategy. Social media is is more um, about sharing your work and connecting with your audience, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about, um, rather than constantly selling to people. 
Um, the one thing that 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 I did um, last year, and I think I you know I sort of continue to to do, is to share content that um, the people enjoy consuming, that people um, can sort of can relate to, and that people enjoy. Um, I I uh, you know I had did have a few moments of sort of lying on the floor in a heap last year. I think most of us did with three months of of not working. Um, <laughs> but it's, um, I just kind of looked at it and thought, right, I can either kind of just, just stop here, or I can use this, this gap to my advantage to really, um, audience build now. And I made sure I was posting very regularly on, on Instagram and on Facebook. And I made sure I was, sh I was sharing, um, I was sharing work. So if you are, if you know, and if there's people here who haven't made any work and are sitting going, that's great. I don't have any work to share. Um, go back through your archives and go and have a rummage and see what you can find um, from your old work. And you can share it and you can talk about the fact that here's a wedding I did five years ago. Um, you, you know, and if you, if you look at your work that you did five years ago and you hate it, you can always re-edit it. I mean, there's, there's lots of things you can, lots of options for, for repurposing um, work, old work that people haven't seen before, haven't seen for a while. I guarantee you, um, unless you've, you've shared some really iconic images, most people will not remember them um, if you posted them way back when. And also, if they are really iconic images, people will enjoy seeing them again. So don't be afraid to reshare old work. It's also quite um, nice that's, that's... Um, if you if you take that time to uh, almost uh, go back, uh, find some uh, of the great images that you've taken, and um, and almost have a theme. So uh, you know, let's say you know for for the the this fortnight, um, it's all portraits, and then after that, it's it's all products. Because then what happens also in your in your feed is that you start getting blocks of uh, that type of content. Um, you know, so that's just one way that um, that you can go in and, and, and repurpose the images that uh, that you've taken a while back. Yes, absolutely, and I think it's I think that's you know it's it's really it's really that's a really great uh, great point, Quinton. Um, so what I found with with kind of those regularly sharing on social media was that once lockdown had finished, because I made a point of creating valuable content sharing stuff with people or ream of people who booked shoots with me afterwards and I had an email from somebody who said I've been really really enjoying what you've been sharing on social media I've been really appreciating that you've kind of done your your best to um sort of not quite entertain but you know I've got lots of dog pictures and people you know, people like those don't they um but, but but done my best to, to to kind of keep things upbeat keep engaging with the audience keep trying to uplift people and I got a whole load of bookings because of it. And, and, that's, the, and that's the thing is, is your social media is your place to really, um, like I say, connect with people, allow them to get to know you a little bit because we do business with people we know, like, and trust. Um, and if you're able to just share a little bit um, about your creative process um, and, you know, that sort of thing on, on, online, people get to know you and they get to like you. Um, I'll share a picture of her. She's on my next slide. So not suggesting anyone should go and um, get a dog for the purposes of growing their brand or business. <laughs> <laughs> um, other other uh, strategies are available. Um, we got uh, a little puppy during lockdown. We had two. The first one I rehomed. The second one is sitting behind me still. Um, and sh I, I kind of... Um, Shot, shot work at home and shot pictures of her and shared what was going on with her because she's completely mental. And I've got clients now that I go and see will, who will say, well, hey, you know, how's Ziggy doing? And, you know, we so love those pictures of Ziggy. And yeah. all of a sudden, you, know, you, you become almost like a, a friend to, to people. And they really kind of get to, to know you. And I think that's so valuable in, in building that connection with people. Well, especially if um, you know they you, you 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 don't you've never met most of them uh, before. The first yeah. time that they meet you is online, and they they build a a feeling of either you know wanting to to carry on with that relationship, um, and there's a perception that they that they get out of it. And if you're positive and, and upbeat and energy and go go go, uh, people warm to that, and that's the that's the kind of person that they want to work with. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So. Um, 
the, um, I sort of totally digressed from my points on my slide here. But anyway, so, so, so a few things you can be doing um, that are really going to help you business build is to get clear on who your ideal clients are. Um, I think often um, photographers make the mistake of thinking that I've got to try and market to everybody. This is a really good time to have a look at what kind of work really lights you up and who is that work for? And to really brainstorm around that of, um, you know, of, of who, you know, who's going to who's going to buy that work and start to really get a, a client avatar in place. So, you know, who you're talking to um, and by talking to, I mean, with, you know, your your branding, your um, your website, um, the, you know, the language you use, all of these things will really speak to a particular client. And it's really important that you get clear on who that is. So if you're shooting products, you're going to use very, very different language to someone who's doing newborn photography. Um, and I think it's really, really important to have a, a very clear um, idea of who that person is. Um, I'm a big fan of, of you know, my, like I say, my niche happened a little bit accidentally, but I think it is, it does really pay to have some sort of specialty to start to become the kind of go-to person for a particular genre, a particular style, um, because you know that is how you will make more money from your photography. Um, it's certainly been the certainly been the case for me. Um, another thing to do is to work on your website. Um, and you know, make sure it's updated, um, and to start having a look at your search engine optimization. Now, I'm definitely not an expert on this, <laughs> um, but I can tell you that um, you need to just have a bit of an idea of the kind of keywords your clients will be searching for when they're looking for a photographer. This, so this is why it's important to have an idea of who your clients are, so we know what language they might be using and what they might be searching for, and to make sure you've got those key phrases in dotted around your website. Please feel free to interject at any time, Quentin, about SEO. <laughs> what, what, what I was going to say with that is, um, you know, you, you don't have to be the, uh, the best in the world at SEO, but you definitely do need to have the basics in place. Um, you know, for yeah. example, one of the plugins, Yoast, I think that's how you pronounce it. Don't, you know, yeah. don't crucify me if it's wrong. But, um, you know, you can have the, 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 that focus keyword, build your whole page around it, um, and, and it helps you through the, the process of making sure that at least you've got the basics in place. And, and if you've got that, that's really all you need because there's a lot of other people out there that don't have that. So, you know, it's, it's important to have the, just the basics. You don't have to, you know, now go and say, well, where am I going to, you know, get the extra money to fund this, et cetera. It's just the basics. Make sure that every page is, is built around a focus keyword and, um, you know, the job is, is pretty much sorted. Then you've just got to fight off the 100,000 million other uh, photographers uh, that are doing newborn photography in Gauteng, um, you know, as your competition. But, you know, at least you're, you're in with the, with the throw. Yes, absolutely. And, and I can, I'm, I mean, I've got the, um, I know your website is WordPress at the back end. My, I also use WordPress. Um, and I have found that if, um, I'm a little bit inconsistent with blogging on my photography website. So I've, I, I had a bit of a... Um, a crazy blogging session at the beginning of the year just to make sure I've got content lined up um, and I'm kind of you know scheduling posts every few days and I have every time I, I schedule a new post I'll get a flurry of inquiries in so it's stuff that works you know the the proof the proof is in the fact that I'm getting a bunch of inquiries it's not it's not a coincidence um, and this is all stuff you can do for free so a lot of this these marketing strategies are things you don't have to spend money on um, they just take a little bit of time and you might just need to do a little bit of research of the, of the best way to, to do it. But, um, but yeah, and, and I'll, um, the Google likes it if you're adding new content regularly to your website because it just lifts it up in the, in the ranks of the search engines anyway as well. Um, I think it's important that you've got a marketing strategy um, and by that, I mean, you know, where are you sharing your work and with who and how? Um, you know, a, a, a Facebook page isn't enough. You have got to have a website. You do need to have, you know, focus on a couple of platforms. I don't think um, it's possible to be on all platforms effectively. And I think for photographers who are doing, say, personal branding or corporate stuff, LinkedIn is going to be a great platform to to be on um, that's not going to be so great if you're an, a newborn photographer so you've just got to yeah. kind of pick your platform um, and and decide on a on a strategy and 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 do, and do a bit of research of the best way to use that that platform 
you know, there are loads and loads of free tutorials out there about how to set up your LinkedIn profile and, and how to, to get stuff working effectively. Um, I think it's important with marketing, the, the biggest thing with it is being consistent. So it's pointless writing a blog post every day for three weeks and then not blogging again for six months. You'd be better off just doing one blog post a week consistently. Um, the same with social media is to decide if you're going to post every day, twice a day, cool, but you need to keep that schedule up or you're going to post three times a week. Um, all these algorithms love consistency um, and, you know, it's all and it is quite time consuming. I think um, social media can end up being a bit of a full time job if you let it. <laughs> Absolutely. And one of the things about the consistency is because uh, Google is full of rules and, um, you know, yeah. very complex algorithms, etc. But the consistency thing is very important because if you if you if you post regularly, um, you know, Google comes back, checks for content regularly. If you if you yeah. um, you know don't post for a month, they'll come back come back. Uh, okay, then the next month they'll leave it for a month, and eventually they'll they won't come back for six months. So if you do yeah. put new content in, it's not going to be categorized um, and, and and put in because Google doesn't know that you've updated your site because you've told it you only do it once every six months. So that consistency yeah. is very important, and it's also it's good when you know for example Instagram. Um, you know, if you're paging through uh, your Instagram feed and whoop, there we go, there's your favorite pet photographer, got a picture, oh, another one the next day, another one the next day. It's consistency, yeah. people see you, you become recognizable, yeah. they see your style, your yeah. brand, etc. If there's nothing, um, you, you, you don't exist. And especially on Instagram where things are literally just choo, 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 choo. And you know, you, you've, yes. got to, you've got to make sure that you're there on a, on a regular basis. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think leading on from uh, you know talking about social media, um, it's important to the, that you're sharing more than you're selling. It's I think the one thing you've got to remember is that social media is is where people go for entertainment, and people go to. Um, <laughs> it's quite addictive for a lot of people. People go, they just you know wake up and scroll. It's very sad actually. <laughs> Yeah, me too. I hope. <laughs> there we go. Um, uh, absolutely, it's a horrid little habit, but but people people do it. Um, but people go there to be entertained or inspired. They don't open Instagram to be sold to. So it's important to remember that if you're constantly hitting people with book a shoot, book a shoot, book a shoot, book a shoot, it's like oh, this person's just here to sell to me. I don't want to be sold to, um, and I'm I'm just going to to unfollow. Um, you know, same with same with Facebook. So it's about you know you can um, you can share great content, you can entertain people, and then once you've got a bit of rapport going, intermittently you can ask for a sale. Um, you know, that's kind of the strategy I've used with it. Um, but if you're constantly asking for a sale all the time, people people yep. just it's a big turn off for people. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> here she is, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the lady of the hour. Oh my goodness! So, if we talk about uh, people interacting with content that you share, this creature, um, I think it was this picture, or there was a little series I shot of her, got like over 950 <laughs> likes organically on my Instagram, and I average about 200 likes on a post. So this kid kind of blew the Instagram up totally. Um, Listen, it so, helps if you've got those little puppy eyes. It really does. And those little puppy teeth. This mm. thing is so naughty, honestly. <laughs> I feel we're, we're sort of wondering if we were actually punished for doing a good deed by <laughs> um, the dog in. Um, so there's huge value in continuing to create. Um, and I'm a very big champion of personal projects and always having some sort of personal project on the go um, in, 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 in kind of tandem with your paid work. Um, where, you know, most people um, decide to become professional photographers because we like creating, um, not because we in it for the money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Um, if you're in it, if you're in it for the money, um, you're probably not watching this uh, masterclass. But um, <laughs> this is to help you work out how to get the money. So, um, but personal projects are hugely valuable. So, I talked in the the previous slide with the marketing about building connection with your audience and building up a kind of tri a, a tribe of fans. And 
you'll do that by sharing your creative why um, and, and a little bit about, about what drives you to create. So we are, I think everybody probably gathered by now that I'm a bit dog obsessed. Um, and it's, it's sharing the, you know, like sharing the pictures of Ziggy and kind of the adventures of what she was up to at home. Um, it gave people a little bit of an insight into me as a, as a person. Um, and on a, on a creative level, this was quite challenging for me. So I, you know, I don't have a house that's like an Instagram friendly house at all. And when we were stuck here during lockdown, I had to, you know, uh, you know, I wanted to keep shooting and I'm looking and I'm thinking I've got, I've got to make some new work. And the only place I can make new work is, is at home and I've got a million dogs. So, um, so I actually had to start looking at how can I use the space I've got and make it not look like a complete disaster. So it, this, it, was a, it was a really good creative challenge for me to, to kind of push myself out of my comfort zone when normally I'd go somewhere else or photograph somebody else's dogs. Um, so it's, it's great to kind of keep upping your technical and creative game, absolutely. Um, and to be able to share your you know, work that, um, that, that makes you a little bit vulnerable, if you like because you're sharing kind of your, you know, it's not so-and-so's wedding, it was so lovely. It's, you know, this is, this is um, work I'm passionate about. This is why I'm passionate about it. And I think um, when we start to build a business that's based on clients booking on wanting your work rather than a price, um, this sharing your own personal work really plays a big part in this. Um, it also, you know, if you're going to, if you're, if you can't shoot regular client stuff, um, you know, it, it it still allows you to share new content that's a little bit different. Um, and I did a, a, a project um, nearly two years ago now called the Black Series, which was Black mm. Rescue Dog. So, yep, you'll remember the Black Series. Yeah, um, that was that was a creative side project. The idea kind of came to me from wherever I, our ideas appear from. Um, and I just kind of ran with it and just thought, you know, I'm going to see where this goes and see what happens. I kind of put my own ridiculous spin on it by captioning the, the dogs with like they were putting themselves on Tinder. Um, and it's a project that went viral worldwide. And it, uh, I did a TEDx talk as a result of it, which was most, one of the most terrifying things I've ever done. Um, but it created some great opportunities. So I have... Um, if you have a look at my profile, I do quite a lot of work regularly for Boss. And the, the, the job working for Boss Dog Food came off the back of the Black Series. Yep, um, absolutely. And that's a, that's a nicely paying regular commercial job that I now have as a result of that personal project. You know, the, at the end of the day, it's also one of those things where, you know, the, the uh, people, you know, when it's a personal uh, project, people, it's, it's a chance for you to, to do exactly what you want. So you don't have to, mm -hmm. you know, go left, right, uh, move this, move that, and, you know, get irritated with the, with the client. Um, but what it also does is, is it, uh, you can decide what it is that you want to do in the future. Because, uh, you know, as you're saying, you know, people will, will see that and there's potential for, for, for work to come from those images. Um, you know, so yeah. if you if you want to, um, you know, as, as you said, you want to you want to shoot more uh, pets, etc. Uh, you shoot this uh, side project, then you get uh, you know the boss boos, da, 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 and the next thing you're shooting the you know uh, the, the, the 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 pet uh, pet portraits of the year competition, or whatever. You know what I mean? But it's yeah. it's because yeah. you you're putting that work out there that people see it, yes. and, and then they realize, oh, that's exactly what I want. Um, so it's it's a great way to do it. We what we do need to do though is I need to have a, a, a masterclass of um, how to get past the initial, oh, but what if it's crap? Um, because yeah. that's, that for me is where, where everything stops. You know, I, um, I, yeah. it's almost like what we need to do is we need, we need to say, hey, let's do this thing um, and, 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 and just focus on that as opposed to we need to do this thing, oh, but how am I going to do it? What am I going to yeah. do? What's going to look like? And then, because that's where I stop. So, you know, that's possibly an yeah. idea for a future, um, you know, a session where, where we can talk people through that, that process. I'm hoping you can help with that because yeah. I need that. Yeah, look, I think that's a really excellent point. And I think it's a sticking point for, for most creative people is that imposter syndrome. And the, 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 it's the, you know, it's the fear of, am I good enough? You know, who am I to share this? And I think it's also a fear of what if people, what if people rip this to shreds? What if people hate it? 
Um, and, and it's interesting you bring this up. So the, the Black series, I obviously came up with the portraits and it was Rescue Dogs and I'd done a, a book with Rescue Dogs in it and I just thought, you know, I'm, I don't want to keep repeating the same formula of, you know, this is Rex, it's really sad, he came from the SPCA, now he lives yeah. happily ever after. Or, you know, the, there's a whole thing with, with black dog syndrome or making it like some really depressing um, kind of, you know, oh, you know, these black dogs, they're 10 times more likely to be put to sleep, etc. Because I looked at it and I thought, you know, we are so tired of seeing negative stuff in our news feeds and negativity doesn't inspire anybody to take action. So I looked at it and thought, okay, how can I get the message out about black dogs? Because they are the least likely to be adopted if they end up at a shelter. Yeah. Um, and how do I get that message out in a way that in, will inspire people and kind of uplift people? So that's where, you know, this idea of, um, you know, writing these captions like they were putting themselves on Tinder came up. Because, I, you know, I do have a bit of a slightly ridiculous sense of humor. Um which I mostly keep a lid on in my kind of professional capacity. So it's, uh, and, and, and I put these captions together and I, I, I prepped a blog post and I thought I'm gonna put this on board, I'm gonna put this on board Panda. Because the, the driving force for it was I want to get my work out there, I want to get this message out and you know, I want more eyes on my work. Um, but there was a part of me that just thought, what if I share this and people look at it and just think, who the hell this woman, how ridiculous. Like, I'm gonna know, I had one, you know, I had a, one that was like a secret member of MI5. I mean, it really did go completely off the wall. Um, and I just, you know, and I just thought, God, what if people really laugh at me? And what if the people who's, who's, who bought their dogs for shoots look at it and think, wow, that's insulting. Um, <laughs> And, and it kind of, that it almost stopped me from doing it because I just thought, you know, I run the risk, really, I'm making myself very vulnerable here. Um, but I think the, the drive to kind of push the message and push my workout just tipped the fear off, off. It just outweighed the fear enough for me to, to share it. Um, and the response to it was phenomenal. It was absolutely phenomenal. I don't think I saw one negative comment on 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 board panda to be quite honest um you know and i had people commenting on there who who said you know goodness i didn't know anything about black dog syndrome this is crazy i'm going to rescue my next dog and i just thought you know that that, that for me one person doing that you, i've made a difference mm -hmm. um and then i so, you know kind of sort of think goodness what if i hadn't have shared it exactly and i think sometimes you we, you just have to be brave but it does take a bit of plucking up of, of courage. Absolutely. <laughs> so yes, maybe we must talk about tactics to feel more courageous. I I'll think give so. that some thought. Yeah, <laughs> I'll put it in the schedule and we'll make it happen. Or, um, or we could just have everybody coaching with me um, and being virtually slapped along forward. <laughs> <laughs> You'll incur the wrath if you don't post the work. I think um, so. Oh, so uh, I've just seen a comment here. Alexandra is saying, what is Board Panda? So Board Panda is um, it's boardpanda.com. It's a very big um, media website. Um, it's, a, it's a huge, huge website. So if you Google Board Panda, it will come up and it has lots of articles. There's lots of things about animals, art, all sorts of things. Um, it's a really, really a big kind of creative hub. Um, I think my post got that, got the, the, the last time I checked, I've, I've sort of, you know, sometimes get a bit vain and check how many people have uh, looked at it. It was about 115,000 uh, views on the, on the article. So it was a lot of eyes on my work. Yeah. And that, uh, that certainly helps, you know, you, you've got, um, uh, not just local eyes, but, um, you know, international. So you may, yeah. you may pick up a campaign for a UK um you know uh, yeah. a brand and um and that's yeah. fantastic so yeah exactly exactly and i think you just you know you you don't know what doors open until you sort of knock on a few um and again the the tedx talk i did was about the the black series and about the process of of being brave and sharing it um and you know it's it's kind of it's, it's opened a lot of doors mm. for me and so that's why I think it's just I'm so passionate about encouraging people. If you've got a creative idea, 
is to run with it. And some of the, some creative ideas you have don't work, but if you don't try, you don't know. And and some of them some of them will work. Um, I saw a great post from a, a friend of mine runs a, a photographic production agency in in the UK, and she put a great post which I shared on on my Instagram story of lead with the work you want to make more of. And I think that is that is such an important thing to think about. You know, when we're talking about marketing and brand building and building a business, is share make and share the work that you want to do more mm. of. Absolutely. And even if that starts as a side project, you know, it's yeah. it's just it's, you know, we're 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 life is is too short to be kind of plowing through work that you hate. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um. Right, so I'm just keeping an eye on the time here. So <laughs> before we're here all night, um, so three three money making ideas for um, for photographers. And these are things that I implemented when, during our you know lockdown when we couldn't we barely leave the house. Um, and these are are very very easy to to do. Um, to, to be able to be generating income without having to leave your, your desk um, or do anything to put yourself at risk or put your, your clients at risk. Um, I mean, I guess I, I'm in a few, a few photography groups and I'm seeing, you know, there's still people who were trying to insist on photographers shooting big events. Um, I've seen photographers who've caught COVID shooting at big events. Um, you know, and I think, you know, you've got to assess the risk, risk versus money um, agenda. But you're no good to people if you're dead. So, um, <laughs> yeah, That's the truth. you know, we've got to be sensible. Um, so the first thing you can do is to put together photo books or sell prints for your clients. So um, I think for wedding photographers especially, um, I know a lot of photographers in South Africa do tend to not sell books tend to do digital files. So this is a really great opportunity to go back to any wedding clients you've got from last year or the year before um, who you didn't do albums for, who I pretty much guarantee won't have done anything with their pictures either. Um, really great to go back to them and say, um, you know, would you like me to put an album together of your images? Um, uh, it's um, I use I use App Photo and I use ProLab for for printing and ProLab have got a, a business booster thing that you can pay two hundred and fifty bucks for and you get twenty percent off all their stuff. So this is a great time to be to be you know you can get a bit of a discount um, when you're on the stuff you're selling to your clients. Um, and you know I tend to if I'm doing stuff like this I'll charge a design fee and then a, 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 a fee for the book. And, uh, you know, you want to be a bit careful with, we all have those clients who you'll do a layout for and they want to change the whole thing. So you obviously just need <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to point, point number three on your terms and conditions includes one Correct. set of changes. Thereafter. Mm. Yeah, thereafter. It's five million rand an yes. hour. <laughs> <laughs> so just let's just send it to print. Um, so this is a really great thing to do because you, you know, it's, it, you can do it from your desk. You've got a, a whole ream of clients that you can pitch this to. You can do a bit of a, a lockdown special on it. You can also do the same thing with print sales. Um, you can go back to clients and say, you know, um, have you done anything with your images? I'm, I'm running a special on canvas prints at the moment or whatever it is you want to do. And you can put together a package and make them an offer. Um, I've often found with things like this, if you don't ask, you don't know. Yeah. Um, and it's the amount of times, you know, because I sell with my photography, I sell, I sell prints and products to people. I don't sell digital files. So I had a client last week who I went to do their consult to sort their newborn shoot book. And then she says to me, oh, you know, would you believe it? We got married seven years ago and we don't have a wedding album. And the photographer went AWOL or something. So I said, do you have the digital? So she said, yes. I said, well, I can do you an album if you like. Oh, that would be amazing. So, you know, it's that, it's that simple. Most people don't do anything with their digital. So you're, if you look at it as you're giving them an opportunity to enjoy their pictures rather than um, it kind of shifts the, the energy of the, of the proposal, if you like. Absolutely. And um, the other thing is uh, that, that age-old cliche of um, it's cheaper to, uh, you know, sell to an existing client than it is to find a new client. 
you know, it's, yeah. you, they already know you. Um, theoretically, they like you, uh, still like mm -hmm. you. Um, you know, so so to to reach out, send an email, you know, and and mention these new things that you that you're offering. Um, yeah. You know, it's 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 really really simple, and it's something that everyone should yeah. be doing. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, you know, the, 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 there are lots of opportunities. It's just we have to kind of train ourselves to look for them. Um, you know, and it, it does involve, I think a lot of this sometimes does involve getting a bit out of your comfort zone because mm -hmm. it might be a little bit uncomfortable sending an email to a client kind of effectively um, offering offering them, a, you're offering them a service. You're mm -hmm. not asking them for money. I watched the, a, a great video um, the other day, of, you know, talking about service providers is that doctors don't ask for money they offer you a service and you pay for it. So if you can shift yourself into, I'm not asking the client for money, I'm offering them a service and they can choose whether they take it or not. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's a bit, of a, a bit of a mindset shift. The second thing you can do, which I did very successfully as well, is to offer kind of buy now, book later, photo shoot vouchers. And this is where the value of having put the time in with connecting with and building your audience pays off. Because I, I believe that a lot of people chose to buy photo shoot vouchers from me during lockdown to support my business. Right. You know, they didn't need them because nobody could shoot and nobody knew when the hell we were going to be able to shoot. And I had people buying stuff in, in April, May last year. And I think that's the thing when you've got that connection with people and, you know, they like you, they like the work that you do and they like kind of your, the vibe you share with the world, they are more likely to support you. Yeah. It's a very good point. So it, you know, this, I know, I know it sort of seems a bit tedious to be thinking, oh, you know, social media and, and, you know, nurturing people, but it, it really does pay off. And it, I think it's, you know, building a successful business is a long game. Absolutely, and it and it and it's hard work. You know, it's not um, yeah. it's not a case of have camera will you know uh, will shoot. You know, it, it's 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 so much more than uh, than just that. And I think that once you start making these sorts of things a habit, um, yeah, you know, it, it definitely uh, becomes easier, and you'll see it in um, you know in your bank balance every month. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I had clients who. Um, you know, I, I was quite lucky at the beginning of, of lockdown. I had clients who had had shoots in February and hadn't ordered things um, and then started ordering stuff in, in March. Um, you know, I had a couple of them say to me, you know, would it would it help you if I if I paid a little bit towards our next shoot? Uh, you know, nice. and, and yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. Um, you know, you're like, yes, it would. Thank you so much. You know, there's a part of me that was like, oh, I feel really bad. And I thought, you know what? Never look a gift horse in the mouth. Mm. So I said, you know, yes, that would be wonderful. If you could do, you know, pay X amount, that would really, really help me. Um, so as I say, you know, this is, this is where um, this kind of shift around there being no clients and no money has to happen because there, there are clients and there are money. Yeah. And I think as soon as you start to look through a, a slightly different lens, you'll see slightly different results. Exactly. Excuse the pun. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was glossing over that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the last thing I did, which also generated a bit of income for me, was offering online photography lessons. Um, I did a, you know, I did like a package. It was two thousand rand for four forty-five minute sessions um, on Zoom, and I was helping people work their cameras. I was helping people, you know, how to take photos. Um, you know, doing you can you can teach if you're really good at, at Photoshop or Lightroom or you know Adobe Spark or something like that. This is something you can offer offer online lessons to people. Another difficult I mean, one exactly. where where you kind of go, hmm, but will anyone buy them? You, you know what I mean? It's that imposter syndrome. You're right back. Uh, you know, I, I definitely yeah. think we need to have a session where I, I'm on the couch going, please help. <laughs> but but it's it, yeah, it's exactly I that think. you know you most of us have got the skills to 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 use our cameras take beautiful pictures um, but when it mm -hmm. comes to 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 selling those uh, skills to to other people or you know in my mind I'm thinking I've got to convince people that that mm. they they you know they can benefit from uh, from uh, you know what I've got to say um, you know mm. it's, it's it's tricky but if you've got the skills um, people are prepared to pay for it you know. Absolutely. And it's how many people do you know who say to you, 
oh, you know, I got this really great camera that someone bought me for Christmas, but it's still in its box. Mm. So I don't know how to use it. Um, and, and you and I know four, four short lessons, breaking it down with someone, um, they'll be using that camera in no time. Absolutely. And the benefit of having a one-to-one -one session is that you go at their pace. So if, if, if it's supposed to be, you know, the controls on, on the first one, but it rolls over um, into the second one, or it goes completely different direction on the first one, that's absolutely fine. It's not like you need to, um, you know, keep nine people happy. Um, it's just one-to-one. -one. You, you go at their pace, and, and at the end of the day, they're going to be extremely happy with the, with the results. Absolutely. And if they're happy and they want to go further, they can just book another set of lessons with you. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's, that's the, that's the thing with it. Um, so I have to say, um, I'll hold my hands up and say, I don't really enjoy stuff like teaching people how to use cameras. Really, yeah. it doesn't light my fire. But I looked at it and thought, you know what, I need to get, I need to keep generating income. So I'll, I'll get resourceful and mm -hmm. I will look at it and say, I'm super grateful for the people who, who took me up on the offer. Um, and, and I, I gave it my best. I gave it my best. It's not something I keep, it's not something I'm offering. Um, but, but as I say, there's, there's, there's lots of people who actually might really, really enjoy teaching the tech side mm. of stuff. I mean, something as simple, quite frankly, is how to use your blooming flash gun. So don't ask me. I don't yep. know. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so many people I speak to, it's, it, you know, they, 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 they bought it and they were so excited about it. And it's still the, 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 the sort of shrink wrap is still on it because they, they're yeah. actually just too terrified to, you know, what do I do with it? You know, absolutely. They're quite frightening things. So, um, <laughs> so I won't be giving lessons on how to use your flash gun. Um, but you know, but, but it's simply, if you're an expert with off camera flash, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, or even putting together, um, you know, it's very easy to put together a little online course, pop it onto, onto a, 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 Sh a Shopify site or something and just have it automated. If you don't want to, to work one-on-one -on -one with people, there are lots exactly. of things you can be doing. Um, you know, and most of us have enough of an audience that you'll generate, a, you'll generate enough clients to, to keep it going. And you might find you come across a whole new avenue of, of work that you absolutely love. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so yeah, sorry, I've got the dog, a dog, the dogs chose to be in here and one wants to go out now. So she's just going to have to wait. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Which leads us on nicely to, um, Quinton and I have put together a, a very special offer for you guys, um, of a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me for, for just 500 grand. So my normal one-on-one -on -one rate is 2,300 grand for a session. Um, but I'm very conscious that, there are a lot of photographers out there who, who may have watched this and thought, you know, that's really great, but I don't know how to get those online photography lessons out there. Or I actually don't know how to put that email together asking those clients if they'd like to buy a photo book from me. So um, um, we're, we're offering these these one on one coaching sessions so you can book a session with me and I can help you with whatever it is you're actually struggling with. So maybe Quinton should book one for his imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and pricing my work and making money. <laughs> so, absolutely. So if you are stuck on any of these things, booking clients, that's a, a, a big one I hear from people is. Uh, I don't know how to book clients. And number two, if you're not quite sure on marketing your work, you know, I shared a few a few things um, in this presentation. Obviously, this the you know there are quite a few other things you can be doing with the with the marketing. Obviously, in limited time to be able mm. to cover absolutely everything. Um, so if you're stuck with that, I can help you with that. If you're not sure about pricing your work, again, that's a that's a, a very big one for for people. Um, I think a lot of photographers drastically undercharge. Um, and there are a lot of photographers who are not making the most of the possibility of upselling their existing clients with um, photo books, prints, that kind of yeah. thing. So, I mean, my, my photography business model is based on is uh, selling prints and products to clients. Um, and, you know, it's and doing it kind of in person. So um, and there's a little bit of an art to that. So obviously help you with that. And, you know, um, if you're in a position where you've got lots of clients, but you're flat broke, 
which is, you know, some people might be like, oh, that's a good problem to have, having lots of clients. But if you're working constantly and you're not making any money, it's also a bit of a problem. Mm. Um, it's, that's, that's where the point at which I was at before I first started working with a business coach, because I actually nearly jacked my photography business in. Because oh, wow. despite doing like 15, 20 shoots a week, I still had no money sure. and, you know, and no life and, you know, was just so fed up with it. So, um, so I thought, you know, that was, that was the point at which I kind of was like, actually, I need some help with this here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so, um, I think Quint is going to share the link to, to the sessions. Um, yes. I just thought I'd share a couple of testimonials from some of my previous coaching clients. And these are clients who, um, have had like literally a few sessions with me and have had really big shifts. So, um, you know, you can get quite a lot done just in one session if you're if we need to work on pricing, for instance, or a marketing strategy. So um, it is, you know, and and I have to say, I absolutely love coaching photographers. It's it I it's I, I love it because it's just so great to be able to. Um, often it's tiny tweaks that people need to make, and it's transformational. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you, know, it's, you, 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 you kind of start off uh, thinking uh, one way and, and a, a small change um, suddenly opens mm -hmm. it up and then you fly, you know. So yeah, absolutely. It's, absolutely. It's, That's you just it. never know and what you're going to get out of it. No, and I said, but I, I just I, I, I just want to share, you know, my, my own journey with it. it. It is possible to make a good living as a photographer. And I think it's this, you know, we're, we're, a lot of people are stuck in this trap of thinking that, you know, you, you, can't, you can't actually make money or it's somehow wrong to make money from being creative. And, you know, like I say, if you use the example of, of doctors, doctors don't sit feeling guilty for their expertise or for charging mm -hmm. you for a consult. Yeah. Nobody sits and says, oh, would you like to pay me that? You know, it's just here's the rates. You know, and there are lots of doctors and they're That's mostly it. busy, I think. Absolutely. And I think that so once, no, once you get to a point once you get to a point of um, you know, where where people are charging what what the going rate should be. Um, yeah. you know, every everything will just um, you know, work out better from there. You know, you you're not getting um, you know, the, the two hundred, three hundred Rand for a shoot and it includes all the images on disc and fourteen prints. And etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You know that's that's a, a really uh, difficult um, uh, difficult situation to be in because as soon as you increase your prices, those clients are gone. Um, but now what yeah. you've done is you've set a precedent that 250 bucks or 350 bucks for a shoot on location um, with hair and makeup etc. is is the standard. Um, but that's yeah. that's that's I think something that um, that we need to get in as uh, you know t uh, uh, in a in another session. Um, yeah. because there's, that's a long, complicated discussion and I've, I've, I've done some, uh, surveys on it and got some questions and I think we need to look at that as a, yeah. as a second, uh, uh, one. Um, we've yeah. got a, we've got a question there from, um, Alexandra. Let's see. How long is a one-to-one -one session? I feel like I need lots of help. There we go. There's your, um, there's okay. your first client. <laughs> <laughs> So Alexandra, this 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 little special is uh, is a thirty minute session. I think if I noticed from your comment earlier, I think you're in the UK. So this will work out at about twenty five pounds for you. So absolute bargain. Um, and then if you want to book one of those sessions in, we can talk. If you want um, more help for longer, we can talk about um, we can talk about packages and stuff for for that. So this is a great way to sort of test out if you're not familiar with coaching, you've never done it before. Um, it's a great way to kind of have a bit of a tester with it and see how you, see, you know, see how helpful it is for you. Um, um, and also see if I'm the right, you know, the right person to work with. So, the, you know, it's, um, I'm going to stop sharing. There we go. There we go. Um, so, yes. Um, otherwise, if you've got a question, um, you can pop me an email. I'm sure Quinta can pop my email address in there. So, Alexandra, you're welcome to pop me an email if you want to, to have a quick chat. That's absolutely fine. I've also put uh, the link um, in the comments uh, to the the one-to-one -one coaching uh, special. Um, it's on the Hunters of Light uh, shop, so you can just go in there, uh, you know, make that purchase, and um, once it's uh, paid, then you'll get a link to um, to that uh, information, etc. Um, I'll, I'll put your email address in there now, and then we just got another question from Lizelda. Um, there you go. You read that while I do the email. 
Okay, so Lizelda says, how do you target your specific audience slash clients on social media platforms like Instagram? So um, I think, Lizelda, it's a case of um, you've got to define who those clients are. So it's, it's as I covered in the, the presentation, it's what sort of work are you making? So you're going to be really clear on, on what you're creating. And then you can start to do a bit of research about who is that for? Um, and, you know, is there a market for this? So if you're doing something like totally left of the middle, we need to make sure there are enough clients for it to be a viable product. Um, but let's say it just popped into my head. Let's say, for instance, you are wanting to, to shoot, um, to do birth photography. So um, a great way to, to target people on, on Instagram specifically is to start, start searching um, accounts by hashtags. So if you were um, you wanted to do birth photography, you might have a look at something like, I don't know, um, pregnant mummies or you know, maternity um, advice. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head because I might have a 17-year-old. I'm a bit, uh, bit, bit beyond small children. Um, but you can start to have a think about what sort of hashtags might be relevant to your audience. And then you can use that, the, the search function on your Instagram to, to have a look at what accounts fall under that. You can start to, um, to have a little look at that. Um, you places where your clients would go um, will also have an Instagram account. So you can start to have a look at who's following. So let's say, for instance, we um, go on the birth photography thing. Santon Medi Clinic is going to have a um, an Instagram page, I'm sure. You can start to have a look who's following them. Um, and you can start to have a bit of a, a stalk through their followers, have a look at their accounts. Do they, are they, is it a pregnant person? Um, because you could start following them and interacting a little bit. There is a fine line with being a real weirdo stalker on social media. <laughs> You've just got to not cross that. <laughs> so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that helped a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's it's having a look at um, another thing you can do is to have a look at other businesses that are doing something similar to you, um, and have a look at their who's following them, and you can start to have a little shuffle through their their followers as well. You know, it's a free market. Um, that's how you'll start to to get in touch with your ideal clients on somewhere like Instagram. And you can also hopefully that. Helps. You can also be really sneaky, and um, when you post uh, one of your, your your birth or newborn images, you go hashtag uh, Santon Medi Clinic, <laughs> because Absolutely. everyone who's looking at uh, uh, Santon um, Medi Clinic um, will that hashtag will see your work as well. Um, we've got a question yeah. here from Taryn. Um, there we go. How do you figure out who your clients are or could be? Okay, so that's a good question. So I think, um, Taryn, it depends on what sort of work you're making or what sort of work you want to be making. So could you perhaps tell me what work you're, what work you're shooting? Amazing portraits. I'll tell you that for free. Um, check okay, out next month um, because she's going to be one of the, uh, the, the presenters. But anyway. Fabulous. Amazing portraits of, of what or who? Taryn? Let's, let's, let's have your comments there. <laughs> no. <laughs> I hear crickets. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, maybe, maybe what what you can do is is um, you know pick a, um, a, a a topic. Let's say. Oh, there we go. Uh, mostly fine art. So fine, fine art. art. Okay. That's fine. So fine art portraits. We're gonna be we're gonna be looking at who who buys fine art portraits. So if you are, they might be something that, um, that people like interior decorators would be steering clients towards. So you could look at whether you can sort of start to connect with, with interior decorators. Um, there will probably be some galleries that maybe you could start getting your work into. Um, there's lots of there's lots of lovely kind of high end um, shops, especially especially Cape Town. I think I noticed there's lots and lots of print print sale galleries. Mm. So you can start having a look at you know where can you get where do your where are the clients for your fine art pictures going and how can you get your work into that space? I also think that um, you know these um, uh, new uh, super high end um, uh, country estates. 
Uh, yes. You know, they, they, they um, will just, you know, uh, devour um, high-end um, fine art stuff. So maybe go to the, the office that's, that's the sales mm -hmm. office and say, listen, I want to put up some of my uh, fantastic fine art pictures here. Um, you know, mm -hmm. and the guys that are going to be coming in there either to complain to the, the estate manager or whatever it is, uh, they'll see this and go, oh, this is interesting. So, I mean, that, that's also uh, an option because, I mean, the fine arts, um, mm -hmm. as far as I uh, understand it, is, you know, the, your, your client places, they, they, they've got a fair amount of disposable income, um, you know, yeah. where they'll, they'll pay for, for, for images that are really, really beautiful. So, it's a case of just yeah. looking where, where do those people hang out, you know, and then yeah, go that's and it. Do where that. do they hang out? And how can you get your work hanging up in there yes. um, with, some, with, with some business cards? Or I think it's just making sure that where your work is, people can see who's, who's created it um, and kind of link it back to how they can get in touch, yeah. how they can get in touch with you. Um, I think one thing just to just whilst my brain is, is functioning here um, is that if you're sending um, the kind of low res sneak peek pictures out to your clients, um, is to put your name or a logo or a watermark or some description on them. I've had an awful lot of business from my clients who've shared my work with my name on it on their Facebook pages. And the amount of images I see shared and nobody tag, people don't remember to tag you mm -hmm. as a photographer. It's the last thing they're thinking of. Um, you can insist on it as much as you like, but it probably won't happen. Um, and you can look at it and go, wow, what a stunning picture. But nobody has any idea yeah. who the photographer was. Absolutely. And it's a missed opportunity. What, uh, what I find really interesting is, um, you know, even from years back, uh, someone will post because uh, it's their wedding anniversary and there's, you know, 17 beautiful images and, oh, look, oh, all of them have got my watermark on them. I feel a bit yes. awkward, <laughs> you, know, you know. But the thing is, that's exactly what you say. No, the, you, you know, you, you won't be tagged in it, but your, your name or your, your photography brand uh, will be there. And um, I think that's 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 fantastic, um, you know, because it, yeah. it'll keep coming around every year. You'll just get yeah. um, those friends of the friends of the friends reminded, um, you know, who took the pictures. Yeah, yeah. You can also, you know, when you're sharing stuff, you can always also make a point of asking clients and saying to them, "Please, will you tag me um, when you post this?" Because if you know people, like I said, people won't always remember. But if you don't ask them at all. They won't even think to do it. It's not yeah. that people aren't being mean. It's just it just doesn't occur to most people. Absolutely, and of course you can always just go, um, you know, add a comment saying thanks very much. Uh, happy anniversary. I'm glad you I still like my pictures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's> my Facebook <laughs> page. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But you know what? That's it's it's. Uh, you, I suppose it's a little bit of guerrilla marketing. You know, you need to. Mm -hmm. You need to be doing these things and, and maybe a little bit cheeky, but as long as you do it in, in a way that, um, that's not uh, offensive, um, I think it's really, yeah. really fine, you know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. No, you've just got to be on, on the lookout for, for opportunities and how you, can, how you can maximize them. Exactly, exactly. All right, well, uh, I, I think we, we don't seem to have any other questions at the moment. Um, okay. So maybe we can uh, wrap it up just over the hour. Um, thank you very much, Emma. I really appreciate it. Um, You're lots, so welcome. Thank you for having me. Lots of info I hope as usual. Helpful. Yeah, no, I, I, it's fantastic. I've made notes and I'm going to go back and rewatch it, etc. Uh, <laughs> but I, we, we need to book a session. I'm convinced of it now. Um, <laughs> so, so thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, and then um, to, uh, you know, if you, if you watch this and you've enjoyed it, um, maybe put a comment at the, at the bottom. Let us know what you liked about it. Um, uh, we don't want to know if you didn't like anything about it. Although, no, you can send Emma those emails. I'd, I'd really don't want to know. <laughs> but um, yeah, let us let us know what um, what you thought of it and um, and what um, what you'd like to see going forward. Um, I think that uh, what what we certainly would like to do uh, is is put together some topics that are really really helpful. And and as we go through this process, we will will refine it and and make sure that um, you know there's there's really really valuable content in um, in what we put out. And um, yeah, let's let's take it from there. Um, if you if you aren't a member of the Hunters of Light um, on the website, please feel free to go up there. You can sign up for free um, the, and have access to most of the content. Um, paid members at sixty bucks a month. It's like two cappuccinos at a at a cheap yeah. cappuccino place. Um, totally but worth it. Two cappuccinos. You get access to all the discussion forums. Um, you know, startup topics, etc. 
the tutorials and and as we add more things so um you know the the, the you'll have more access uh, etc and and as i said it, we, i'm i'm really keen to this this whole initiative was started to to help educate motivate and inspire um photographers at lockdown and and you know two months time is going to be when um, when we we started this a year ago and um, when we still thought this was going to be 21 days um and <laughs> can you believe it but you know the the it, it, that's that's really what the, the 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 reason for this setting this whole thing up and 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 if if there's if there's anything that i can do as as uh, the hunters of light to to make your 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 business easier your photography uh, uh you know better uh, just reach out and, and let us know you know we we we're, we're here for you and um, whatever we can do to to help you in your journey is is really um, what we, we aim to do. So yeah, thanks very much for uh, for joining us tonight. And, and if you if you're not um, uh, if you're watching this later on, thanks very much for watching it again. This will be put up on um, on the YouTube channel uh, probably uh, tomorrow sometime. Um, but yeah, Emma, thanks very much. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thanks very much for your time. And uh, we'll we'll set it up again in in a couple of weeks and, and do another one. Fabulous. Thank you for having right. me. It was an absolute pleasure. Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks a lot, hey. Cheers. Bye. Bye.